Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Timotor Velox Cine F7 flight controller. In this quick video, I'm going to go over its features and specs, install it on a new build, and head outdoors and test it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the flight controller, you are getting a Timotor sticker, 10 pieces of M4 to M3 silicon grommets, 5 shorter ones and 5 longer ones, two 8 pins JST harnesses for connecting the flight controller directly to a 4 in 1 ESC, and keep in mind that this layout matches the same layout that is used by other 4 in 1 ESCs by T Motor. So, in case you are using a different type of 4 in 1 ESC, you will have to make sure that all the pins align correctly in order to avoid damages. You're also getting another two 8 pins JST cables that can be on one end connected to the flight controller and on the other hand soldered to the 4 in 1 ESC or the other way around. A 10 cm long harness for connecting the flight controller directly to the DJI Air unit and a 15 cm long 6 pins to 6 pins JST harness which is used for connecting the flight controller to the DJI O3 or the Voxnet Avatar Air units. In terms of features and specs, the Cine F7 flight controller features an F7 processor and a USB Type-C port. It supports up to 8 motors and features two 8 pins dedicated JST connectors for connecting the flight controller directly to two 4 in 1 ESCs and on the other side of the flight controller you can find matching pads. In addition, it features an onboard barometer, 5 volts and 10 volts BCs, can be powered with up to 6S batteries, features a TVS diode, a dedicated user 1 pad, and a 6 pins JST connector for connecting it to a digital VTX, 5 full UART ports, and an ICM 42688P gyro chip. In terms of dimensions, the flight controller weighs 9.2 grams and its outer dimensions are 36 by 36 by 5.7 millimeters. Now I'm going to install the Cine F7 flight controller on this new build, but before that I would like to go over the pinout of the 6 pins and 8 pins JST connector, as at the moment of shooting this video, it's not documented on Timotor's website. According to my test, which was done using a multimeter tool, the left pin on the 6 pins JST connector is 10 volts, then ground, TX3, RX3, ground, and then RX1. This pinout matches the same layout which is used by the harness for connecting the flight controller to the DJI Air unit, so in case you are using the DJI Air unit, you can simply use it, plug the other end, to the DJI Air unit, you'll need to configure MSP OSD switch on your 3 and in case you are using the DJI radio controller, you can set the radio port to your number 1. Pay attention that this is not the same layout which is used by the harness that connects the flight controller to a digital air unit, so you will need to reorder the pins of the JST plug which is connected to the flight controller as otherwise you are very likely to fry the digital VTX. As for the pinout of the 8 pins JST connector, the left one is used for connecting the main 4-in-1 ESC, so in case you are not using 8 motors you should use it. The left pin or right pin depends on how you look at it is ground then VCC, motor number 1, motor number 2, motor 3, motor 4, then current sensor and RX4. The other plug, similarly, the right pin or left pin again is ground, then VCC, motor number 5, motor number 6, 7 and 8. This pin, according to my test, is not in use, so it cannot be used as a current sensor, and the last pin is also mapped like the first plug to RX4. Now, as you can see, this new build is ready. And in this build, in addition to the Velox Cine F7 flight controller, I'm also using the Gepper C Mark V Pro 
5 inch frame, the Woxnell Avatar HD Pro Kit, an Express LRS radio receiver by Foxeer, and the Timotor Velox V50A BLA32 4-in-1 EC and Black Friday 2207 1950 KV motors. Due to the structure of this frame, as I wanted the XT60 battery connector to be on the front side, I had to rotate by 180 degrees both flight controller and 4-in-1 ESC, so I had to change the orientation of the flight controller in beta flight and had to remap all the motors. Both adjustments can be easily made using the latest version of beta flight, and the only downside is that each time you will upgrade the firmware of the flight controller, you will need to repeat the same steps. As for the Avatar HD V2 VTX, it is connected to the flight controller using the dedicated 6 pins JST connector. I had to reorder the pins which are connected to the flight controller since, as I've mentioned earlier, the layout doesn't match the one which is used by the Avatar V2 VTX. And I also had to change the 6 pins JST connector on the other end to a 4 pins JST connector. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage. Hopefully everything will go well, but if it doesn't, I will let you know. As far as I can tell, this is a pretty capable flight controller, which is going to be mainly suitable for someone who's looking for a flight controller that supports two 4-in-1 ESCs, as having two 8-pins JSD connectors on the flight controller really helps to keep everything organized. And so far, the only downside that I could find is that the 5 volts BC doesn't power up when the flight controller is powered using the USB Type-C connector, which means that you'll need to power the flight controller using a battery in order to be able to power up the radio receiver and other peripherals, including a GPS. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. I wish you all happy flying, and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.